this is the quarter four lymph congestion campaign, all right? So we've had constipation this year. And this is the second one we're having this year, all right? This is part of our objectives. And this is called lymph congestion, all right? So when we talk about lymph, what does lymph mean? What does the lymphatic system mean? Does anyone know? None? No one? Do we know what blood is? Blood? Yes? Awesome. So inside of your blood, what do you have in your blood? You have red blood cell? White blood cell? Platelets? What else? Lymph, right? Water, right? So there's lymph that's part of your blood. Does that make sense? The, the clear fluid in your blood is lymph, right? So clear fluid, that's what lymph means, all right? So the purpose of that lymph is to carry blood and also to carry white blood cells, all right? So that white blood cells can get to areas where they can protect your body against infection, right? Does that make sense? So the lymphatic system is an interface be between the immune system and the circulatory system. The function of the circulatory system is to do what? To pump blood, right? And so when your heart is pumping, your heart is moving blood all over your body. And the purpose of that is to get oxygen and nutrients to the proper channels, to get it to your tissues, to your cells, and to your organs, right? To support the process and the, and the metabolic process that they're doing on a daily basis, right? So what happens? If oxygen and nutrients does not get to a cell, if blood does not get to a cell, it doesn't get oxygen, it doesn't get nutrients, what's going to happen? It's going to die, right? So you don't want your cells to die, right? So that's the purpose of circulatory system. So what's the purpose of the immune system? To protect your body against infection, right? So this system is in between, in between the circulatory and the immune system. So if you don't support the system, you know what's going to happen? Your circulatory system is going to be deficient and your immune system is going to suffer as well. Okay, so this is why we want to support the system so you can support elimination of waste. This is what happens. When your body pumps blood, the blood is going to move throughout your, what, I'm sorry, let me repeat that. When your heart pumps blood, the blood is going to move to different parts of your body, right? And so when the blood gets to the tissues and to the cells, what do they do? They take in oxygen, they take in nutrients, they use that to make energy, right? And when they're done making energy, what, what are they gonna release into the tissue? They release waste, waste products, right? That waste product needs to be gone. You don't want the waste products to remain in your tissue. If it remains there and it stays there for too long, what's going to happen? It's going to start supporting the replication that's a big word, but it's gonna to start to support the spreading of bacteria. Bacteria and viruses will start to divide. Okay, they'll start to multiply, all right? And that will eventually lead to infection. So this is why you wanna get rid of waste as soon as possible, all right? So after your body's done eating, after your body or your cells are done eating, what happens? They make waste products, and this system, the lymphatic system, is responsible for cleaning out those waste products, right? Circulatory system feeds the cells, lymphatic system cleans out after the cells are done eating. Make sense? You don't want any waste. What happens when you don't clean out the waste? What's gonna happen? It gets accumulated, right? So you get an accumulation of waste. And this accumulation of waste is what's gonna eventually lead to the multiplication of the bacteria and the viruses and all these dangerous cells you don't want in your body, right? This is what actually leads to infections, diseases. A lot of time when you're congested, you think, oh, it's just congestion. No, you're getting infected because of lymph system that's not moving. So how do you know if your body is congested? I've already mentioned the first sign you're going to see, you get congested sinuses, right? You're just sneezing all the time. You can't even breathe properly. That's a sign of congested lymph. The lymph channels are also divided into lymph nodes, okay? So there's lymph nodes that actually helps our lymph channels to drain. 
the most accessible lymph node you have in your body is in your neck area, okay? You can feel that underneath your neck, you can feel that around your neck, right? When you're sick, what do you see? What do you feel? You feel like your neck is really tight, right? You can't even turn your neck, you have painful uh, neck, you have painful uh, sore throat, right? So those are signs of it. All the signs is constipation, uh, lack of energy, brain fog, you're having frequent headaches. What about skin rashes? What's the purpose of our skin? The purpose of our skin is to protect us from the outside world, right? There's a mechanical protection that this skin provides for you, a barrier against infection, but also it supports elimination of waste products. When you sweat, you're sweating out not just water. You're sweating out salt. You're also uh, sweating out toxins and waste products, right? So if you're not sweating on a regular basis, are you going to be getting rid of the waste? No. When the waste is stirring in your body, it wants to get out one way or the other. If you're not supporting proper channels and proper opening of the pores, what's going to happen? It's going to turn into rashes on your skin. The waste will start to come up as rashes on your skin. This is why this is one of the signs of congested lymph. So what are the things we're doing that's responsible for causing us congested lymphatic channel? Number one on the list is highly processed, refined foods. These diets are highly acidic in nature. And when you eat a lot of acidic foods, what's going to happen? When you eat a lot of acidic foods, your blood is going to be acidic in nature. Your cells is not going to be properly nourished. And this is going to make the lymphatic system to be stagnated. Okay? You don't want that. So, when I was talking about the lymph, I said lymph, right? And I said clear fluid. So what does that mean? Water, right? So 90% of your lymph is made up of water. If you're not drinking water, where do you expect your body to get lymph from to help you to move your blood? Nowhere, right? So your body needs water to move the lymphatic channel and to also move blood, right? If blood and lymph is not moving, your white blood cells will not get to the right area to protect you. Your blood is not going to get to the cells that are supposed to be fed, right, with nutrients and oxygen. Does that make sense? So you need water. Dehydration is one of the reasons why. You're getting lymphatic channels. Environmental toxins. We're clean our, constantly cleaning our house with, uh, uh, with this uh, damaging products, with fragrances, and we're spraying them, thinking that this is going to help us suppress smell. You don't want to be doing that, right? This contains a lot of chemicals. And these chemicals are slowing down your circulatory and the lymphatic and the immune system as well. It's like anchoring your immune system, right? You don't want to do that. You want to support them, right? Lack of exercise. What's going to happen if you sit in one area for four hours without standing up? What's going to happen to you? Your circulatory system will be stagnant. It's not going to move. Circulatory does not move. Limb system will not move as well, OK? Have you ever seen, have you ever been to the hospital? You see that people who are bedridden for a while, what do they do to them? They have to turn them over, right? What's the purpose of turning them over? To move blood, to move lymph. Because if you don't move blood, you don't move lymph, what's going to happen? You get stagnation of blood and fluid in one area. And that is a recipe for bacteria to start to multiply in that area. You get infection, you get bed sores. They, we call them bed sores. But it is because of bacteria that is starting to divide and it's starting to eat the skin in that area. That's why you don't want to be stagnant. When you're stagnant, your body will be stagnant, your lymph system and your circulatory system will be stagnant as well. Chronic stress is the last contributor to that. So based on what we've discussed so far, what are the things you can do to move your lymph and to support your immune system? OK, so the big one is to exercise, all right? You want to be moving, right? So exercise does not have to be complicated. People think they have to go to the gym to exercise. You don't need that. You don't need all of that. You can wake up in the morning. You can get on the floor, do some push-ups, do some squats, Walk on your abs. It's straightforward. You only need 15 minutes. You don't need a gym to exercise, right? How many of you here play cricket? Cricket? Football. football. Okay. So you love to play football. Go play football every day. That's exercise. You love to swim? Go swim every day. You love to do Tai Chi? Do that. Whatever you love to do, 
do the exercise every day. This is supporting movement. When you're moving, your blood is moving, your lymph is also moving with the blood. Make sense? Number two, eat green leafy vegetables. Vegetables, what's the point of us eating vegetables? The purpose of us eating vegetables is to get vitamins and minerals to make energy. And not just to make energy, but the vitamins and minerals also support the movement of the fluid because it contains a lot of antioxidants and this is supporting the movement of our lymphatic system. Also, beets contain beta cyanine, which is another antioxidant that helps to support the movement of your circulation and also the lymph vessels. Dry skin brushing. What is this? Has anyone done this before? Do you know what it is? Yes? No? No one knows. Okay. So, this is not when you're taking a shower at all. This is not wet. There's no water involved, okay? This is just dry skin. There's no soap. There's no water involved. This is what you do. You take a brush like this or the long one. I prefer the long one because then I can reach my back, okay? This is what you do, right? When your skin is dry, no water at all, right? You brush your skin, okay? You don't want to irritate your skin, but you want to brush as hard as possible so your pores can open, right? Once you brush, you, you're brushing towards your heart all the time. Remember that, you're brushing towards your heart all the time, okay? And when you're doing this, you're supporting the, the superficial lymph system to, to start to drain into the deep lymphatic system and that will go and bring all the lymph back to your heart, okay? So this is the instruction on how to do that. I'm not gonna go into the details, but in essence, what you wanna do is brush back towards your heart, okay? You're bringing all this lymph back into your heart so it can go back into circulation, all right? You can do this every day if you want. It only takes five to 10 minutes. And after then, you can take a shower. This is what I like to do. I like to do the dry skin brushing and then I go into the sauna, okay? So because when I do this dry skin, my pores open and then I go to the sauna, I can sweat out all those waste, even more so, all right? And after then I can take a cold shower. That's, that's what I like to do. It's up to you if you wanna do that. Talking about water, you need to drink more water, okay? When I say water, I mean natural mineral water, filtered water, not water in plastic, water in glass. Okay, to even take it a step further, you can add lime, you can add lemon, you can add mint, uh, and sea salt or Himalayan salt into your water. That will add a little bit more electrolytes that your body actually need to eliminate waste products. Okay, when you're eliminating waste products, your lymphatic system will be moving, all right? And then you can have lemon ginger tea. Lemon ginger tea supports the movement of the lymphatic system, okay? You can add that as much as you want, all day long. Lymphatic massage. This is a little bit different massage from the regular massage because the purpose of this is to follow the pathway of the drainage of the lymph. So you're going up, right? The stroke is going up. The purpose is to move all the fluid that's staying in your tissue to move it back to your heart so it can go back into the circulatory system. Understand? So it's a little bit different. It can be expensive, but if you can afford it, uh, go and get one or learn how to do it and do it to your partner and ask your partner to do it to you. It's, it's up to you. You can learn how to do it. Just go on YouTube. Sauna. I already spoke about sauna, all right? The purpose of this is to get rid of all this waste that's storing in our tissues, all right? Infrared sauna is the best type of sauna. And that one is different from the traditional sauna. Traditional sauna, yes, you're gonna open your pores, you're gonna sweat, but infrared goes deep into the cells and it pulls out all the waste, okay? And when you're getting rid of waste, you're sweating them out, what's gonna happen? You're removing congestion, right? Once you remove congestion, the lymphatic system will start to operate more efficiently. Deep breathing. I see a lot of you, you're breathing from your chest. No one, I don't see anyone breathing from their stomach, except for this guy. He's breathing from his stomach, okay? You want to be breathing deeply from your stomach. From your, I didn't, okay. Not stomach. You want to be breathing deeply from your abdomen, okay? From your abdomen. Here, right? This is where you do it. You see that? There's a difference between using your chest and your abdomen. You want to breathe from here, not from here, all right? When you're breathing from here, you're using your diaphragm. And when the diaphragm goes up and down, what, what, what is it doing? It's bringing the lymphatic fluid with it as well. Make sense? Lastly, 
Epsom salt bath. This is not your regular table salt, okay? Please don't take table salt and put it into the bath and expect it to do wonders. It's not gonna happen. This contains magnesium, okay? This one is different. So you can take some of this and pour it into warm bath, all right? And the purpose of this is to improve blood flow to your whole body and to stimulate the lymph and the immune system, all right? Also, the salt is binding and drawing out toxins from your body, all right? If you, if you do not have money to buy this, or you do not have the bathtub at home, what can you do instead? You can go and swim on the beach. Go to the beach, you can go and swim in the salt water, okay? It's the same effect. Sounds good? All right, any questions for me? No? All right, thank you guys for coming.